Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern. And I hope you're all keeping safe and well. And uh, are you ready for another episode? I'm sure you are. Right, so let's get started. A couple of weeks ago we had a little competition um, for winning some ore wagons. And uh, Ed Herring came up with Haven. And after a little bit of uh, conversation, comments, and etc., I decided to lose the West and call it Little Haven. Now, the reason being, there's a little beach in South Shields called the Little Haven, and uh, I thought that would go well together. Little Haven and uh, we've updated the drawing as well um, just to highlight some of the details that I'll be adding to this area uh, the last drawing wasn't too clever because um, I've had a bit more of a think about it and this is what we've come up with for Little Haven. Now I did have a question regarding this station whether it's going to be fictitious or whether it's going to be based somewhere. Well originally I was going to use Westall Lane station um, for this area and I still am but, uh, but it will be called Little Haven. Now then, you also have a station name called Little Wylam. Now the reason why we have a Little Wylam is because Julie Bell came up with this suggestion, Wylam Station, as it was the birthplace of Robert Stevenson. Um, so why have we got a little Wylam? Because Ed Heron kindly donated the ore wagons to Julie Bell and it's only fitting to use her suggestion as well. So we have, but not yet. Because in the last video I briefly mentioned uh, another station hence why I have added this point so I've been rather busy off camera as you can see here I've added another extension and this is going to be the terminus station a little while now the station building I'm going to use for this is Jarrow um, railway station, the old Jarrow railway station because um, I quite like the uh, front of the building and I'm trying to keep uh, um, the tradition of this layout being well a northeastern layout even though we have buildings from all over the place on this layout but uh, there you go and it also gives me an excuse to reach that pub up there northeastern because the only reason you could reach that pub up there is to cross the tracks so at least this way you'd be able to get a train to the pub it's not a very big baseboard, it's only 300mm wide, but it's enough to, to get this in, a little while in. Um, yes, depending on space is depending on how much detail I'll be able to put in. Um, as you can see, that would be the main station building, and I've left a little canopy there so that'll be over 
the um, tail end of the station if you like but the main entrance and exit will be right at the end of the baseboard uh, the baseboard itself uh, I think I've mentioned already is only 300 mil wide and um, I don't think I'm gonna get much detail into that but uh, you never know so there you are a little while in. so while I crack on with the baseboard I'll let you guys just carry on watching some trains for a few minutes how's about that you watch the trains and I'll carry on well working hard <laughs> Catch you in a bit.
So that's the last train to depart South Shields uh, until the roof is down. Um, reason being is all the work that has to be done will have to be done in situ. So that means marking out the lines on here for the rafters and uh, protecting the tracks and that by covering it with cardboard with platforms um, just to make sure that there's no solder or flux um, or oils or paints that will spill onto the tracks and platforms which will create problems for me later on enjoyed the running session and while you've been watching the running session I have fitted the last board for this extension last week you saw me put in a left hand turn out over there and now you know why because we're going to have a station here a little while in well that's what I thought until the feelers went out about what station to put here now I was dead keen to have Jarrow here um, it's quite a narrow baseboard it's only 300 millimeters before Land's End and I've only got 100 millimeters there for me to do any maintenance or whatever because we have the banister which goes down into the house so yes I put up two photographs of what I'd like to put here and uh, just to see what the consensus is and um, I like Little Wylam because it's a stone building and it kind of matches the Saracen's head that we've got way 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 over there in the distance and there, there it is and that's a stone building now Little Wylam only has the one entrance and that's on the platform side and there's nothing on the back side if you google earth it there's no other entrance but however Jarrow has a like a church like feel about it and I'm wondering what that would look like if I did it in stone so I could have the Jarrow front um, here um, and if you look at the photo station side You've got the whole building there, front and back, as it were. So, I have a, a, another dilemma, really. Although this was supposed to have been a little while and I have spoken to uh, Julie Bell about this, and yep, she was quite happy to say, uh, name the station, as it would have been. She would have been Jarrow, but it's not going to be Jarrow because it's not the full station so I'm going to have to rethink on that anyway this is what I've been up to so mainly the construction on this side is done just got to fill in the holes and on the other side I've still got more baseboards to do 
Other things I've been doing is removing the three bridge buttresses. There's one here, one there, and the other one over there where you just see the towel sticking up. Because originally I was going to have a bridge come across um, here and uh, well, that would have been the end of the layout. But uh, since I've extended these baseboards, I've decided to lose those three bridge buttresses. They were getting in the way of um, filming up Stevenson's bank. I mean, if you've seen um, the videos of trains running up Stevenson's bank, I would sometimes have to pause the camera and then start it again just to miss seeing these bridge buttresses. So they're gone. Um, I've got to repair the damage I've done here. But uh, that's an easy fix. I've already repaired the wall, put in a brand new wall there. And also, it would help when I'm operating the, operating the trains, I can see roughly where the train finishes, or where the engine finishes. So, this is the next thing to do, is to sort out the track plan. Um, <laughs> you see all these lines. It's trying to work out the depth of the building, the platform, and also where the end of the track may come. Um, looking at what I've been doing so far, um, I won't be able to have any of the bigger engines come to um, this station. So it'll be like the shunter type or the N7s, N2s, the J17 classes maybe, um, little engines like that, maybe even just about fit the C1 Atlantic in there, but, um, but we shall see, because like I said it's not very big this baseball, it's about 4 foot in length from this point here down to where that curve is at the far end. So yeah, so the platform will be around about 900 mil, which will just about get that DMU in, along with probably a three to four suburban coach train. Hence why it's a little station. But we shall see how it pans out as we go further on the build. So we're moving on a bit now and we're starting to get the track work done for this station. Um, I'm using the straight edge here, this one metre rule, just to keep the track nice and straight for the platform coming here and here. So once that's nice and straight, I just go along and then pre-pilot the sleepers, ready to take the pins. I'm doing them roughly every 100 millimeters apart. And it's just a case of knocking the pins in. So you're making sure it's still on the pencil line because I've got a pencil line underneath the rule as well. We're almost there and fitting the track. Um, I just thought I'd show you how I do my curved fitting of the track. Um, as you can see here, all I've done is it's fixed at the other end and all I've done is matched up the track with the curve. So I follow, I go straight down, so I follow the radius of the curve. As you can see of the track, you can see the joint underneath. If you look closely you can see the pencil mark made on the tracks where I'm going to cut it 
and that way it's, the curve is already preset um, ready as you can see there I've used the rule as a straight edge to start setting this up so it's just a case of cutting that there and then it should fix onto there now that the track is cut you can see how the outside rail is longer than the inside rail due to the curve coming into uh, this point here so if I'll just fit it and we should see how it turns out well, this is the tricky part getting the fish plates to line up with each other once they're in they're in Now you can see how I've got a nice sweep of a bend there now. So at the moment that there's no expansion gap uh, at either end because it's such a tight fit as you can see. So what I'm going to do is just gently prise the track away on this curve and hopefully that will open it up here and here and then we'll have a nice expansion joint like we have on the inner track there. So we're almost coming to an end of another video and if you bear right you hit towards timed up and if you bear left you head towards uh, the Jarrah Road or a little while and the reason why I just said that is because on the community page on the YouTube channel and also on Facebook um, I've made my choices for the station I'd like to put here uh, it's, it's not going to be a carbon copy as uh, we've already mentioned um, and you can see why because the station is going to go right at the end of the track so that's the entrance by the way and the platforms are going to run right up to about this mark here um, yes so it's been an interesting week all around um, and I do appreciate everybody's input. Uh, I do love um, a little bit of um, communication between yourselves and uh, regarding um, what I'm doing here because I like the uh, thought processes of um, what's actually going on. So this is this view. And this is the other end, so as you can see we've got a little road which is going to go in straight to the pub. I could do with a drink right now. <laughs> right, I think that's all from me guys. Until next time, enjoy your model railways. Thanks for now. Bye.